TJ Finn. And I'm Connie Schrader, Mayor of the City of Bastrop. This is a special edition of the Heart of Bastrop Talk Show. It's all about the film industry here in Bastrop County. Bastrop County got the film-friendly designation after a lot of hard work, and there's a lot of effort going into it. People don't realize how much we have right here in Bastrop County. Absolutely, absolutely. And so our, our viewers know we've spent all season putting this talk show together. So um, just don't think we're so magic we can change clothes that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to see a lot of clips that it's taken us all season to put together and now we're at the end of season four and we wanted to give you guys a special not only did we do a special series about the talks about film industry we also did a special series about the music industry here well in one of the things that we learned if you think about your favorite film you think of the music from that film those industries have a lot of overlapping they really and they're do. so full of creative people absolutely and we but we think that all these great interviews would be too long for one on show so we split it up into two fabulous special editions for you guys um for this show i mean we even interviewed a famous hollywood starlet who is just she was amazing. precious she's precious we're not going to tell you who it is you're going to have to hang around and find out and then uh also a, a world famous shakespearean trained actor that everybody will recognize this face been recently on yellowstone and didn't start his career until late. What would they say um, later in life? Or maybe his prime. In my his age, prime. There his you prime. go. There you go. And <laughs> we excited. learned about makeup artists and even a stunt person. Absolutely. We got we got a little bit of everybody for you guys from actor. I mean, it just it amazes me how much talent that we have just in this small area of Texas. We have everything. If you're going to film in Texas, we have everything you need right here in Bastrop. Well, and every if we growing the talent we've got the art institute training folks to be to have jobs in the film industry absolutely everything from film production to just it's amazing you guys are going to be blown away we really want to get to it and let's show it to them let's do it Today, we're here with Adina Lewis, who's the Director of Tourism and Economic Development for Bastrop County, a familiar face to many. But today, our topic is film. And many people don't realize that Bastrop County is the film hospitality capital of Texas, as designated by the state legislature. Which is pretty cool. It's very cool. I think when we got the designation, it was like other big cities went, other counties went, well, we should have had that. And we just got it. We fought hard to get it. Well, you, if you snooze, you lose if Adina's on the job. <laughs> so, um, and of course, the city of Bastrop is film friendly. And we've had, tell me again, you've been on the job for eight years. Eight years. Probably 150 productions. Uh, not all of them are huge movies. But uh, even those commercials that we bring into town, um, bring economic development to the communities. So when we talk about Bastrop County, most everybody knows about Bernie, everybody knows about Hope Floats, but to your point, there's a lot of commercials and smaller productions and they hire caterers and have people working for them. And they have, yes, and they have overnight stays sometimes that are important also to our economy. And we also get to know those people. Many of them are from the area and I, lots of times I have them say, man, I wish I lived here. I need to move out here. And so we're, we're recruiting future citizens as well. Well, and you told me that we made some friends during COVID. Why don't you talk about that? We did. Thanks to you and uh, Judge Poppy, we were able to get waivers so that our uh, productions could continue. Um, they were required to have really strict COVID uh, plans in place. Uh, and I can say no one was um, exposed to COVID that we know of during any of those times. So those folks have become really, really grateful because that's their job. When these people come to town, they're doing their work. That's what they do. That's how they feed their families. And so the more we can have in this area, the more jobs these people have without having to leave uh, the town or the state. 
Well, from an industry standpoint, we know that the film industry is green and clean. And to your point during COVID, no one was as interested in protecting those actors as the people that were putting on the production. And it's not just the actors, it's also the grips and the, the caterer and all those people that are part of that. Even a small commercial. It takes I mean, a village. Mm -hmm. It does, and the film industry, I always, always stay till all the credits go at the end of the film. And I challenge you all to do that because all of those people have contributed lots of time and effort in their niche in that production. So even a small commercial will bring 80 people to town. Well, TJ knows a lot about the film industry. Yes, I do. <laughs> I tell you, um, I, I'm curious because I know here at the Hampton we have the cast that stay from Walker. We have uh, Fear of Walking Dead and the list goes on and on and on. And of course we do that big cult classic every year where all the films come in that's done from the gas station, Lisa Rose. It, it amazed me when I moved here, coming from the film industry myself, how many people here are involved in the film industry? It's, it's wonderful. And our communities love it. I think our citizens recognize it. Um, I'm sure the mayor as well as the county try to protect the citizens and make sure it's as least an inconvenience as possible. Absolutely. So it's a it's a fine line to be completely hospitable and also work around that. In the county, um, if you film in the courthouse after hours or on weekends, we do not charge you to use the facility. So we can encourage them to come, but not come so that it interferes with the work of the it's like Absolutely. anything else. People are excited about it until it keeps them from getting to H-E-B and then they're right. mad and then they see a famous actor and they're like, oh, it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. So <laughs> forget it all works out. Can we uh, come at my house? Yeah. 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 We forgive you, right? So in Smithville, they did Tree of Life. That That's was a, a big one. So I'll tell you guys a little story about Tree of Life. So during the time that that was filmed, I was an agent and several people with my agency were cast for, for Tree of Life. And one of them that was cast for a small role was my daughter, Tiffany, the one that my daughter oh. that recently passed away. And one day before filming, they cut her role. Oh. And she was mad at me up until the time she left this world. <laughs> <laughs> she was so excited. Brad Pitt! I'm going to see Brad Pitt! And then her role got cut, so she was pretty sad about that. But, but those productions like that, it draws people from everywhere, like you said. And... And from a hotel perspective, it's a big chunk, you know, so. And the hospitality of the hotels is really important. Absolutely, which uh, there's a lot of things that citizens don't completely appreciate that hot funds take care of. Hot funds are hotel occupancy taxes. So, um, you know how that $99 hotel room is never $99. Well, part of that is the hotel occupancy tax, which the state takes a sizable chunk, but fortunately, locally, we get some of those funds as well. Everybody thinks about the actors. Of course, we see their trailers, but I'm always impressed at how many people are involved. To your point of even just a commercial production, it can be things like set products and caterers Absolutely. and clothing and um, why don't you talk about some of the different crafts well uh, you know the there's names for all of these folks in the industry i have this way i describe it i i say somebody writes a script whether it be for a film or a commercial and they tear it in pieces and they throw it up in the air and different people grab different pieces of the puzzle mm -hmm. they all come together and make the story and then they grab another piece from someplace else and they move on. So sometimes these people only work together one time. Sometimes they've worked together for multiple, multiple years. So there's a camaraderie. It's like a create a company for just a short, it's not even a company, oh, it's really? more like a yeah. family. It's more like a family mm -hmm. because they, they have each other's backs. Every one of the roles is really important in supporting another. Not of the actors, but the cast and the crew and all the different folks that are involved. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the film industry, we consider a million dollars a low budget. <laughs> well, right. so and, that tells you and it's a money small, money. really, for as many movies and as many commercials are made, it's it's pretty small territory. It, it's a small world. They, mm -hmm. they know each other. They talk to each other. Mm -hmm. They, to your point, they depend on each other. And we're just really glad that the city of Bastrop and Bastrop County are such a huge part of that industry. It's, it's wonderful. And, and the hospitality shows um, and it takes it takes that village but you know it's not just the the city and the county as a government that make them feel welcome it's the communities mm -hmm. and it's the citizens that are out there that help us 
have this status. And it, it is important. It is important that we continue to do this. You know, I've had people call me, producers, um, directors, and say, TJ, I'm coming into town and, and I need a place to film this, this, this. You can reach out to a friend and say, hey, your ranch over there, these people are wanting to, and they'll welcome you with open arms. I mean, it's really very embracing. Recently, um, I set up something with Texas Grill for them to film at Texas Grill, which is, you know, mm -hmm. also was used for Friday Night Lights mm -hmm. and other things as well. So, so it, I mean, it, it's amazing how, like you said, the community coming together. We don't just welcome you as a government. Our community says, come on out, you know. Well, and they don't always just want our pretty places. Mm -hmm. You think about films, even think about commercials. They have all kinds of sets and sites that they need to find. Absolutely. And the location scouts also, um, there are many location scouts, but we have some that really specialize in Bastrop County. And they'll call and they'll say, okay, we need a this or we need a that. And if we can help them find that, it's a whole lot easier than them having to drive around and, and knock on doors if we can help them make matches. Well, you know, I have to tell my favorite all-time film story. Let's and the it. reason that every taxpayer should just never be mad if they're ever having to wait at a stop sign. And shout out to Robert Tamil with the city of Smithville because they were getting ready to repave Main Street. And the film that was being shot, they were like, wait, we, we don't need a brand new paved street. We need it to not look so great. Mm -hmm. We need you to hold off. And Robert negotiated and to your point of a million dollars as a small budget they were like he was like well you don't understand I got a contract got to get going on this long story short they said well we'll pay for we'll pay if you won't do it right away Robert was like let me break out my calculator yeah that'll be just <laughs> yeah, fine be <laughs> and then it turned out they came back for the next season they were going to pay the other half of the road and did the deal again so oh, the wow. city of Smithville has a paved main street that costs zero tax dollars well. that's what the film industry can do with, with working together and being cooperative and looking out for each other. The school districts also get supported. My All-American used uh, Smithville Stadium and they used Elgin Stadium and made really nice contributions to the booster clubs in both of those schools. So it, the, the tentacles kind of spread out. Yes. I, I describe it as when you're standing by the water and the wave's going to come up, sometimes you want to get wet and sometimes you don't. But you don't ever know exactly where to stand to accomplish your goal. Well, when a film or production comes into town, it's going to bring a wave of money. We just don't know exactly where it's going to go. And it can be extremely different from one to another. Low budget, our goal, I think, should be, and I think it has been, to treat our low budget uh, opportunities the same way we treat our multi-million dollar office. Well, just like our citizens, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you're visiting, whether you live here, whether you're here just to work on a film, we're, we try to be polite and nice to everyone. And Absolutely. it's been our experience that if you treat other people with, with respect, they're going to be respectful back. Absolutely. And that's why Bastrop County is the film hospitality capital of Texas. We'll have to learn to say that simultaneously. There is film a hospitality town. capital of Texas. <laughs> I love it. So if I'm a filmmaker and I want to come into Bastrop and County and to, to make a film, what's my first step with you? Well, we, we talk about what your, your goals are as a, uh, as a product, as a production. And we talk about timing, what time of the year you're going to need to come. We talk about all the different sets, and I try to, they may come looking for just one particular thing, like the courthouse. We, the courthouse, the historic courthouse, we call it the Bernie courtroom, <laughs> <laughs> um, gets used a lot. And so when I'm talking to them about that, then I say, well, what else do you need? What else do you need? Trying to help them, time is money in these productions, and we want them to stay as long as they possibly can. So we talk about all the different scenes that they might be looking for. If we can help them find those, it's, it's really a benefit to the production. And, how, and how, our film show is right up that line, isn't it? It is, it is. We really want to encourage people to come into Bastrop County to see all that we have to offer. So how do they get in touch with you? Well, a lot of times they're referred to us through the Texas Film Commission. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very strong film commission. It's an office of the it's an governor's office, mm -hmm. and their whole purpose is to support production. 
So sometimes they're referred to us through the Texas Film Commission. Sometimes they've talked to somebody else that's worked with a student. The networking is extremely strong. Um, the folks that are coming from out of state, we get a lot of folks from California, a lot of folks from New York. So they'll tend to go to the Film Commission first, and that's kind of where we, where we learn. What, uh, what is your, can you tell everybody what your web address is? Well, for our tourism, it's explorebastropcounty.com. We don't really have a specific um, website for um, film. Um, when, when somebody comes to town, we, um, we work with them individually and try to get that done. Mm -hmm. Well, what you guys do is amazing. And your website's beautiful, by the way. Thank I really you. like the website. It's very informative about Bastrop <coughs> County. So we love it. Thank yeah. You. Well, Thanks for stopping by, Adina. It's always great to see you. Nice to see you guys, and nice. we appreciate everything you do to support the film industry. Thank you. So, guys, we're here with Barry Corbin. Really don't need an introduction because you're one of the most iconic character actors of the last 40 years. But we're, we're going to talk about... Um, the film industry here in Texas, you know, you know, Connie can tell you a little bit about, you know, what's going on with the film industry here in Bastrop County. So, so we have the wonderful designation of being the film hospitality county of Texas. So one of the questions that I have for you is what makes you want to film in one location over another? Because we want to be film friendly. We think we have a lot to offer, but we want to make sure that we're doing what the industry needs. Well, it seems like we've, uh, we've got uh, everything you'd need in Texas, but uh, uh, apparently they get better perks from other places, you know, better tax breaks and things. So we got to work on that. We got to work to get them, uh, get them some tax breaks. And uh, what uh, what happens is that uh, a lot of the times the the uh, representatives and senators don't uh, understand that we're not just giving them money. Uh, all that money comes back to us, to to our local economies. Uh, because you've got uh, restaurants, you've got hotels, you've got uh, cleaners, you've got all these all these different things that uh, make money out of having films here. So uh, we're not we're not giving them a big bunch of money just to just to squander on uh, things that people in Hollywood squander money on. Absolutely. <laughs> well, one of the things we talk about the film industry is that it's green and clean. And so, and to your point, it's, it's everything from food catering to carpenters building a set. It, it oh, yeah. really has a lot of industry that supports it and it can be a benefit to everyone. That sure can. And it, uh, and it is, it's a benefit to all the people who've tried it because it, uh, it, it pays them back, uh, with dividends, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so, that in, it's, but, uh, also, you know, we we've got the varied uh, the varied scenery and the ver and the varied uh, uh, geography. We got the sea coast. We got mountains. We've got desert. We've got it all. So we need to get more film in here. We need to come here and look. Absolutely, absolutely. So you know, I, I something I was really surprised to learn about you because I know many of us fell in love with you in your film uh, debut as Uncle Bob on Urban Cowboy. Um, but you're actually a Shakespearean trained actor, and I had the wonderful opportunity to get to hear you and. I was blown away, and I bet that's something that a lot of people don't know about you. Well, that's probably true. It's, uh, you know, I, I don't uh, really uh, use all that in film. You, but you generally, sometimes I do. I, I did the, the Thorn Birds. I had a, another kind of an accent for that. And, uh, you know, there's a few films that I, I've used something else, but uh, usually I just bring it close to myself. Right, you're de you're definitely a Texas boy, and and then that plays well for you in them westerns. <laughs> well, a lot of times uh, people feel like you're cheating them if you 
if you use a, another accent, they don't uh, quite understand how you can do that. Right. <laughs> well, it's like so many things, you make it look easy and people don't appreciate the talent behind it. Absolutely. Well, yeah, the, the, the work that goes into it, uh, if you see the work, if you see the work, you're not doing your job. Right, right. You know, I was really thrilled to see you uh, on an episode of Yellowstone because I'm a huge fan. And, and and you were on there talking with a friend that you actually knew. Yeah, you, Buster Welch. Yeah. Very famous in his world. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. But you know, you know, something else that people may not know about you, Barry, is that th the film industry has become a family business for you guys because your your son Christopher is an actor, Christopher Corbin, and then of course Jordan Walker Ross is your grandson. That's right. Yeah. And he yeah. he's got a re recurring role on 1883 now. He's a 1883 and he's also doing one called uh, Washington's Armory. Mm -hmm. and uh uh also the chosen the chosen that was incredible that was incredible i'm really looking forward to meeting him his he's he gets it honest <laughs> well he's uh he's a he's a pistol he he, got, he knows how to stir up work better than i do <laughs> he'll be keeping you busy right yeah yeah i told him he's got it he needs to get in on on uh some of my stuff and, Get me some work. Amen. <laughs> Gosh, well, I'm I'm really thrilled that you're here. The film industry, um, you know, a lot of people that are local, that are viewers know that I came out of the film industry before I settled here. I retired before I settled here in Bastrop. And, you know, we all, you know, just want to see this area continue to grow. We've got this new film studio coming in. Barry might not know about that. Let's tell Barry about hey. that. Yeah, they told me you were building a, a film studio there. So there's um, a company that's come out of, not surprisingly, California. And um, they're looking at 552 acres that is bordered by the Colorado River. And they're talking about putting sound studios and then leaving the bottom, the kind of lower 200 acres of the property natural. And to your point, with the scenery, and you can imagine with the Colorado River, they have oh, river yeah. property, um, it can be the Middle East, it can be, you know, you can put up a set and it could be like you're in a war-torn Middle East or it could be the Alamo or it can be a modern day subdivision all yep. on the film it set. Be, you, you can move the camera 10 feet and you've got a whole different setup. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So this business, this company, um, it we're it's now known as Bastrop Colorado Bend is what they're calling the studio, and their um, concept is that uh, a, an actor such as yourself could be able to uh, work there on site, and if it was you know if you were shooting for several weeks, be able to live on site. And, ha and, you know, play golf. They're talking about building a small golf course that's set up for filming golf. But if somebody's wanting to play when there's not a film going on, make it where there's a lot of recreation activities and make it as nice as possible for the actors, for the talent and for the people that work there. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're Maybe really excited. him in there or something. I I'm sorry, what did you say, Barry? Maybe put a little workout spot in there. There you go. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> well, and that was actually one of the things that they were talking about. Um, and of course, like all everybody, you guys in the industry dropping names, but um, so often they, they aren't going to be, they don't necessarily want to be downtown drinking and eating quesadillas. They are on a really strict diet and they need to be working out. And so um, full hookups for the super fancy RVs that they like to live in because they have that controlled caloric intake and being able to work out, but being able to enjoy their family and everything that the community has to offer as well. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So so I can't wait till you film your first film down here at the studio, Barry. <laughs> well, let's get it. Let's get it started. 
Let's there do it. Go. Let's do it. And you were talking about some of the tax breaks. One of the things that the state of Texas offers is our media production zone. And we, the city of Bastrop has um, voted and supported making that area a media production zone. And that gives them a relief on sales tax for two years for construction related to the studio. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what uh, what outfit is this building? That do you uh, do they are, have they started a LLC or is it just is yes? It, it's Bastrop, Colorado Bend LLC. Yeah, um, and it's a it's a gentleman um, that had Studio Line Two Hundred Four in California, and I, I I I'm not sure if it's exactly the same people, but and it's Alton. I can't remember Alton's last name right now, but. Um, line Studio Line 204 is what they have in California, but the LLC here is Bastrop, Colorado Bend. Uh huh. Yeah. It's not the only studio. We already have a one of the largest sound stage in Texas is right here in Bastrop County. Yes, it is. Yes. It's off of 969, which is just a little bit outside of the city of Bastrop, but it is inside Bastrop County, and that one's up and working. Uh huh. Good. Yeah. So. Yeah. They got somebody filming there now? I am told that right now there are Korean guys that are making um, videos and gaming is who's renting the space right now. Uh-huh. Yeah. So we YouTubers. Have, right. They, they That's have the big, big thing. Big stuff for YouTube. Yeah. So we yeah. HBO was just here filming Love and Death. They were staying at the hotel here in Bastrop, uh, filming all over Bastrop County. So, over course, there. Yeah, yeah, Love and Death through HBO. That's, and then also, that's Pan kind of thing. that takes in the whole world, doesn't it? There you go. <laughs> that's soup to nuts, isn't right, it? Right, right. <laughs> and then Panic was here filming. Panic comes the Walking around, Dead. Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. Walking Dead also. Um, Texas Ranger. Yeah, uh, the new Walker films here. So yeah, we're really excited. It's 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 crazy all this stuff that that is you know filmed in this area, and it's just continuing to grow. Yeah. What's your next project, Barry? Uh, gosh, I don't know. I've got uh, I've got about six or eight that they they keep pushing because they they're trying to get past this COVID thing, and it keeps popping up, you know. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, I, they'll probably all come together at the same time, and I won't be able to do all of it. <laughs> well, that's always how it happens, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, I've had to, a lot of times. I've got uh, I've got four or five things lined up. I can only do do two of them, and uh, the other ones I've just got to let go. So I'm I'm going to be nosy. It's not really any of my business, but if you have five projects ahead of you. What's the highest criteria? Is it the um, the part or the people that you're working with or the location? Or what, what criteria do you use to decide? Well, the first one that comes in with a solid offer. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right. You know, I don't, don't need I, the money. <laughs> I'm not real picky. I like to, I just, I like to have a solid offer and then go do it. There you go. That's it. That's it. And this, well, past, uh, this past couple of years has been pretty iffy. Right. Yeah, it's been rough for everyone in the film industry the last couple of years. And so one thing I'm noticing is that things are changing. You know, content is starting to outweigh movie theater content, you know, like online content. You're seeing A-lister stars that you would have never seen in doing, you know, Netflix series and right. HBO Max series. And yeah. Right. yeah. Well, Definitely. People, uh, people have gotten out of the habit to go to movie theaters. Right, right. They at yeah. home stream something, and uh, I can't I, I can't do that because if I, if I start streaming something, I lose track of where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it's older folks want to want our movies in the movie theater yeah. where they're supposed to be. I like and it. I, I like get three back hour to movie, it. three hour at the most, you know. Right. There you but, go. But a, a six or eight hour deal, I, I can't I can't hardly do that. I did sit through Lonesome Dove the first time I saw it. <sighs> 
whole thing. And my dad did too. My dad sat there and he never got up. He sat there and watched the whole deal. Well, if there's one you're going to sit through from beginning to end, that's a good one. Yeah. Well, I About every two that. years we do that. Um, that's, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barry, it's Alton Butler is the, is the guy, the main guy behind our Bastrop, Colorado. Okay. Alton Butler? Butler. Alton Butler. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know him, but uh, that doesn't mean anything because I don't know anybody. Well, let's somebody, say you just don't know him yet. <laughs> somebody asked me who my who my favorite people to work with are, and I said, I said, well, if they're if they're under sixty, I don't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, so tell me a little bit. Um, you guys, I've lost my train of thought, guys. Don't don't worry, I can cut it. <laughs> I was gonna, and I, I want to ask you before I do this on film, if you want to answer this. Um, so, are you going to be in that four sixes spinoff series that they're gonna do? I don't know. You don't know yet. Okay, okay. So I don't want to address it and put you in an awkward position. I'd rather just kind of no. skip over it. I I'll tell you this, I'd like to do it, but I don't know. Well, if you, you need, if you need me to harass the casting director, I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, I hope you are. I hope they find a reoccurring role for you because you're just so iconic. It gives that something a little more like, oh, it's Barry Corbin. If you... Uh, you know, sometimes people say Barry Corbin and they'll think for a minute. And oh, I remember him. My husband's biggest thing is um, what's it called? The the war games that you played in? War games, yeah. He, my husband is is nothing to do with the film industry. He can recite almost every line that you say in that movie. <laughs> well, I made most of it up on the set. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So what do you want to talk about next? Do you have any points that you want to cover that you want to get out there? And no, no, we just need to have more. Uh, we have need more film activity in this state. That's a, uh, that, that's my main thing. I, just, you... did, I just did a film uh, up in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, I was up there all summer and into the end of the fall. Oh, and wow. uh, doing a film up there, and it was a big budget deal. You know, it was uh, 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 the uh, Killers of the Flower Moon was the name of it. Oh well, wow. awesome! Mark Scorsese directed it. It's a it's a good uh, good movie. And uh, the reason they did it up there is because that's where the actual story took place. Gotcha, gotcha. A lot of stories in Texas that uh, that can take place here. Right, right. Uh, the uh, uh, when we did No Country for Old Men, they they were they spent two weeks in uh, Marfa, Texas, and the rest mm. of it they shot in uh, New Mexico because mm. of those film initiatives, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we got to work on that. We got to really, and there's an alliance, uh, the Motion Picture Alliance here in Texas, they're always pushing for more, uh, you and know, better our, our friend Mindy Raymond is mm -hmm. doing a lot of lobbying. And, you know, here in Texas, our legislators only get together every other year. Um, yeah. So, some folks don't really want them together much more than that. But when they are together, we need to get things done. And um, they'll be back under that granite dome come January. So it's time to get after it. Absolutely. Yeah, they, we need to get them on there. We need there to you get go. them on uh, Absolutely. Well, Barry, thank you. You're amazing. I'm a huge fan. I know well, Connie is absolutely. too. Thank you so much for your time. Tell you, I got to tell you one thing that I read the other day. It's a quote from Victor Buono. Do you remember Victor Buono, the actor? I think so. That's familiar. And uh, he, I think he got an Academy Award nomination for uh, whatever happened to Baby Jane. There you oh, go. Yes, yes, yes. He, big, big, heavy man. He said, uh, said people call me a character actor. I'm not a character actor. I'm a fat actor. 
<laughs> I could play Romeo. Of course, I'd have to very, have a very specialized Juliet, maybe a, a Buick in drag. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's amazing. Well, we will be looking for you and not only on your next film, but we'll be looking for you to be able to do something right here in Bastrop. Well, yeah, I, might, I might just come down and scout the area. You need, you need to. to. Yes, yes. We have a, the weather, a... weather gets a little better. I know that you... Well, that could be tomorrow, yeah. Barry. The yeah. way... <laughs> It was 86 yesterday, Barry. You missed it. I know. I know. It, it's it is, uh, 80 here. There you go. There Barry, you go. I want to introduce you, and I'm going to do that through through our Barry, our shared Barry. And I want to introduce you to the lady, Lisa Holcomb, who runs the, the theater here. Our Be opera house. Opera house, our Bachelor of Opera House, because um, they do incredible plays, and... And I would love to see you be able to come down and do a Shakespearean oh. you know, act here like you've done in other places. So yeah. I hook you guys I've, up. Uh, I've got a I've got a little uh uh little program called An Evening with Barry Corbin, which yes. is exactly. which is just, I'm, I do little snippets of things, you know? Oh, yes. that sounds great. That's what we want. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what we want. Well, Y'all put it together and I'll be there. You got Excellent. it, buddy. You got it. Barry, thank you so much. I hope you have a great evening. Oh, thank you. I'm sure I will. Y'all, too. You just you keep on working on this and let's get it done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Take care. Stay warm. We're here with Harvey Giblin, who's the president of the Art Institute in Bastrop County, is proud to be the film hospitality capital of Texas. We know that we like filmmaking. Well, and I'm glad because we're here and we, I've been here all that long, but it's been a, a, a great to see so much activity in the film industry down here. And it, it really works so well with what we're doing in terms of educating our film students. I love the fact that your students have an opportunity to learn, learn the trade from you and go right to work and not have to leave town. That's right. And, and the fact that we're conveniently located in, you know, Spiderwood Studios and there's a large production going on out there uh, more often than not. And those are internship opportunities and employment opportunities for our students. And, and I keep hearing about another studio opening up. And so it really is exciting times for Best Drop Film. It's up your, your alley, isn't it, TJ? Just a little bit. So, Spirewood Studios has the largest soundstage in the state of Texas. Did you guys know that? Yeah, I, I did, I, I've seen that thing. Big, big green. It is amazing. You walk in there and you're like, I couldn't even, the first time I saw it, I was just, I think my eyes were like a little kid at Christmas and got real big. It's yeah. Like, so, what an exciting opportunity for your students to actually work with people who are actually working and making a living in the industry. It, it really is. And I got to tour that, that green screen, and it is amazing. They, they can do just about anything from production side in there. They can even make it rain. You've heard make it right. rain, right? <laughs> they can actually make it rain in there. Absolutely. Uh, and it's really, yeah, it really is a, a great example of something that we wouldn't otherwise have access to that you know, level of, of technology and that size of a green right. screen. So it's really great. It's well, really one of the things I like about Bastrop County is with the diverse geographic terrain that we have you can be in the middle of a desert you can be in the middle of a rainforest you can have wagon wheels going across the colorado river there's a, a, a true vast array of scenes all right here in bastrop county it, it is so true and, and the space out there i think it's 160 170 acres it's riverfront they can just take the gear and go out and and shoot, like you said, just you know, in, in a, an old farmhouse or a riverside scene or at the green screen and have it be whatever behind you. So. Absolutely, and people are so, we, we've talked about this before, Connie, people are so willing for you to come in and film, right? So if you own a house downtown, we, we recently talked to, to the church and how they had several productions there, all of Bastrop County, Smithville, a bass, there's always a production going on. We, there's Walker, there's, um, gosh, there's the Chosen film here, I think, a little bit. There's just always something going on. And so this one right here. Be, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Everybody Everybody something's going on. So. That, absolutely. Um, so I'm curious, if I'm a young person, I've decided I want to, you know, work in film, what type of degrees the Art Institute offer for those students? Primarily bachelor's degrees. It covers not only the film and technology side and the industry side, but a general education component as well. Wow. The idea being that we graduate students that certainly know the film side, but they also have that critical thinking 
uh, goal setting career um, aspirational thoughts as well, not just technology and film. Uh, so it's a well-rounded program. That's amazing. So if you if you're interested in um, film editing, for instance, I've recently told my son, go to the Art Institute. What are you thinking? He's like, where do I go? Um, and I know you guys offer, I don't know about here in Bassard County, but I know where he's at in Houston, they offer that. Is that something you offer locally as well? We do. We, we have the same program offerings in Houston as in Austin and San Antonio, the three locations are all pretty much the same and they all have film and audio programs and, and the film program. I just encourage anyone to come by and tour the studio just to wow. put, put eyes on the, on the equipment and the gear and the green screen that we have access to uh, and ask a lot of questions and just really, you know, um, do your research and, and you'll, you'll find that AI is a great option. Well, I've always been impressed that AI was trying to make sure that the students were trained on state-of-the-art equipment because you don't need to learn how to use the equipment that when you go to get a job, nobody's using that equipment anymore. Right. It doesn't do you any good. That's right. It's hands-on and the more hands we can get on the equipment with our students, the better for them. And there's a, a lot of that, the, you know, lab and hands-on time for them in pretty much all of our programs. That's amazing. Well, Setting them up for success in Bastrop. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that's, that's the goal. goal. That's the so goal. So if you want to be, a, if you're in Bastrop and you're interested in the film industry, it's a really good place to start. Check right? us out on YouTube Live. We have a lot of great footage out there, student projects, not just film and audio, but we have fashion, interior design, a lot of, a lot of programs out there on YouTube. So check us out on YouTube. And a lot of those end up in a music video or on a play, the, the fashion industry, everything, all kind of, all those creative things work together. They sure do. We just did a mural for the Houston Astros. If you go to an Astros game, you'll see a big mural that two of our graduates did over there. So. Fantastic. So what's your website? Uh, artinstitute.edu. And you can look at San Antonio, Austin, or Houston if, you, if you're out of the area. Mr. Giblin, thank you so much for stopping by. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So we're here with Morgan O'Hare, and I'm so excited that you've come. So our show is all about the film industry, and you're a local actress. We would love to hear what your thoughts are about all these new a studios coming in all the productions um i honestly love the expansion into the texas film industry because Absolutely. one it lessens the amount of travel i have to do personally so i don't have to go to atlanta or new york or california in order to land some of these roles love so, it. so we know that you're an actress but you have many other roles yes, I so do. tell <laughs> us all about you so I consider myself a Jill of all trades. I can do just about anything. I have taken customer service uh, classes, painting. I co-own a business, com uh, business called Teen and Painting outside of Austin, Texas, and we do service the area. Um, I also paint murals for that. I do photography, I do art, I do just about everything, but I am also an advocate and a chairman for my kids' school. That's amazing. Yes. You know, and I, and I want to share with our audience something very special about you. So all these things that you do, are so active, you actually have a disability. I do. It doesn't look like it, but <laughs> let's talk about that because it's very inspirational. A lot of people with disabilities may think, I can't do this, because, but look at you, you're, you, you do everything. So let's talk yes. a little bit about that. So that's one of the biggest things that inspired me to move into acting and modeling is I was told many times by my doctors, when I was seven weeks old, I had my first surgery. And I had tumors removed from my spinal cord, and I still have some there. But they told my mom that most likely I would never walk. I learned to walk that first time. I had my second surgery at 16. Um, they removed more tumors. I lost the ability to walk that time on my left side. Relearned it again. I was in the hospital for three months. Wow. And then in 2020, right after COVID, I had my third surgery. Um, I was actually formally diagnosed with spina bifida lipomyeloma meningocele, which mm -hmm. is an extremely rare form at a rare location on my back. Right, and so, look at you, yes. you're amazing. So I also, my son has spine bifida, yes. and he's had multi, 100 and, oh, almost 150 surgeries. <sighs> uh, yeah, a lot, so it is very painful, it is yes. very dangerous, and it's very hard to overcome these surgeries. And I am so proud of you Thank as a parent, you. <laughs> you know, as another human on this earth. This is such an inspiration to to you know to everyone whether you're an actor or you're not it's an inspiring story well and you talked about one in four yes. tell, tell me about that so one in four adults in the americas has a disability uh, most of the time it's invisible so a lot of times you'll see someone who may have a handicap placard but they're not using a mobility device um, 
For my case specifically, I do have a handicap placard, but I don't use mobility devices as I don't need them sometimes. Right. But I do get accosted at the store and people will ask me, well, why do you have that if you're not disabled? Well, you may not be able to see it, but if you look at my back, I have about a foot and a half scar. I had about 40 stitches the last time and I had to relearn the whole ability to walk. So for me, pain is a major player. I say right. that that's more of my disability than the spina bifida. Right. Because my pain keeps me down. But you're driving home the point of you don't judge a book by no, the cover. Absolutely not. You don't know everything because you've looked at someone head to toe in yep. 10 seconds. And so uh, the placards are not handed out. No. There, not. there is a medical process to go through that. And so people can just take a deep breath. That would be, yes. and, and a little kindness goes an awfully long way. Yes. So what do you say to them? Well, a lot of the times I get um, a statement like, oh, you're so lucky. And for me, that can kind of be an ablious statement because for someone with my condition specifically, I wasn't diagnosed until later in life. So I did not get the proper care and treatment that I might have needed growing up or the education. Right. Um, so that caused some detrimental stuff. So I bring up the instance of there's a physics law that your reality is not my reality. Right. If we are both in a car accident, I am on one side and you're in the other vehicle. What you just processed, the five minutes before your accident, is your reality. But that's not a reality to me, and it's not true to me because I didn't go through those same things. So I say that as a very good example. When you see a disabled child or a disabled person in general, don't immediately say, oh, let's not invite them because they can't do this. You need to give that to that person and say, hey, would you like to do this? I know it might be outside your comfort zone, but I really would like to extend this effort and invitation to you. And a lot of times we may not be able to do it, but being seen as someone who is able-bodied or included as someone who's normal is a major, major player for us. So to the idea of you're so lucky because you have a handicap placard, it's like you wouldn't exchange one of the surgeries I've been through, much less the four, right? Yeah. So there's always more to the story and it's so wonderful that you've taken that experience and made the very, very best of it. Now you spent some time in Bastrop and you placed in the team pageant, did you not? I placed in the Our Little Miss pageant. Um, I was in the Mrs division. I placed um, as mini queen for Texas through Our Little Miss and then I went on to play seventh nationally. Congratulations. And was that last year? Yes ma'am, that was in July. In July, that's right. I yes, do plan to compete again. I don't know Good. if it will be in July this year or if it will be in January, but I am planning to compete. That's great. All the all Our Little Miss girls say at the Hampton. Just yes. say it. Yes, and I stayed <laughs> here last time and I absolutely love it, but one of the best things about that patching system is their motto. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Oh, Absolutely. there you go. Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking about, TJ. It's fantastic that you have all these talents and that you're also an actor because you might just play yourself in your life story. Hey, I I'm hoping so. I'm going to write a book one day. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's all right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And if people want to find out about you and your career, how can they do that? I know you got some social media. Yes. Going on. Um, so I am just about on every social media out there. Um, on TikTok, it is um, XX Captain Mo. On Instagram, it's Captain Morgan um, or Morgan Lee Talent. That is my professional modeling. And then if you want to book me or hire me, you can contact either Gamut Management, which is the first ever disability representation company out of New York. Excellent. Or TL model out of Houston. Love it. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank today. you, ladies, so for having great to me. meet you, Morgan. Yes, man, yes. it was lovely meeting y'all. Garage Old Spirits American Badass Whiskey presents the Sizzling Summer Nights Concert Series, June 18th, July 16th, and August 20th at Community Gardens in Bastrop, Texas. The series kicks off with American Idol Bo Bice with performances by Jay Edwards and local artist Winter Dawn. Check our lineup and get your tickets now at SizzlingSummer.com. The 2022 Bastrop County Buyers and Builders Convention is now open for vendor registration. This two-day event is held September 17th and 18th at the Bastrop Convention Center. Bastrop County has experienced unprecedented growth and development. If you're part of this booming industry, this is not a show you'll want to miss. Go to our website at thebcboa.com to sign up. Sponsored by the Heart of Texas Chamber and visit Bastrop.
So I'm here with Melissa Hayes and tell us the name of your business. So I am with Call for Beauty in uh, Bashoff, Texas. So let me tell you something special. So my dear friend, Melissa, also does hair and makeup in the film industry. So that's a big deal. You just wrapped up Walker, right? That's so exciting. And, and what made you decide you wanted to work in the film industry? Oh, goodness. Um, I just love, love getting people ready for special occasions. And it just kind of happened. I, um, I just have always loved it and I it just the door opened for me to be able to do it and um, like with Walker I get to do I'm a background artist or a day player but um, it's fun so you're helping someone feel good about the character that they're playing um, for maybe for just that day but you're kind of uh, helping them for that special occasion and so just kind of fits into what I'm what I'm passionate about. Well, you're she's certainly good at it. So she you did both mine and Connie's hair and makeup for this show. And I feel pretty fabulous, guys. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> We're really excited. It turned out amazing. I was like, wow. You're fabulous. Well, you're fabulous. And how exciting to be part of the industry. As you know, I was an agent for many years. I've been part of the film industry even when you try to retire you can never get away from it, it, it <laughs> and here i am with a production company and a and a talk show but um it is a lot of fun it's a lot of fun and if you have that creative spirit you know it just it just feeds your soul it, it really does and so tell me who's been your favorite person to do their hair and makeup well, and you don't have to say me, even though we know that's <laughs> true, but you go ahead. <laughs> um, so outside of uh, being able to do film or television, I love doing brides. Again, it's just, you're just part of something special. Um, but I will say that um, even though I don't have a huge role in hair on television, it, I still feel really honored to be a part of just doing background people. Um, I love it. Uh, we had a few shows actually that were going on in this area that did film in Bastrop at times. Um, and it was just fun, you know, uh, with one show we were making people look like they were uh, living in the 70s. So I had a lot of afros. Fun. And, uh, some of those actors are people that I know that live here in Bastrop County or, you know, live in Page or live in Bastrop, Smithville. Um, Fun. Uh, so it, you know, I, I think that's been my favorite so far is just helping whoever is background make it, uh, make the experience even better for them. Exactly, right. Yeah. Make their character awesome. believable. Mm -hmm. And, and I love that. So when you get to be on a set and it's something retro or something just, you know, totally off. So I did this movie. Um, I was on the set. It was called, I think it was called The Wonderful Wanda. And it was shot in Dallas. And and they they had this incredible tent, right? So it was like a circus tent from like the 1930s. And the actors were all, and that was so fun. I really, I don't know what it is about that. And it's actually um, a documentary, but they, they put it together kind of like a film, right? So it was a docu-series and it was so good. And I really enjoyed being on that set because you, it's, I, I walked in that tent and it was so weird. It was like stepping back in time. And I'm sure you feel like that too, when you're on set and you're doing all this, you know, like you said, the seventies here. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't remember the seventies, honey, but I do. <laughs> I was actually so born experience. in 79, so. Yeah, no. you, you I missed don't remember. the 70s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was incredible. The hair, the bell-bottom jeans, and the, yeah, it was incredible. That is so much fun. So as you know, the film industry here in Bastrop, it's just exploding, mm -hmm. right? So we have all these great films like Walker and uh, Fear of the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead and, you know, all these films that that are shows that film here regularly. And then a lot of movies and all of Bastrop County. And of course we have Spiderwood Studios, but then we have this big, huge studio coming up, um, hopefully in the next year or two. And I am, we're all excited about that. And that's just gonna explode. You know, we're a film friendly city and, and it really takes a lot 
a background workers to make those productions happen. Mm -hmm. So you, you know, people think of movies, they think of the big stars. They don't think about who did that star's makeup and their hair and their, you know, all these things that it takes to put together, you know, the gaffer, the, there's so much that it takes to, I mean, that we have to do to put together this production. And, um, so is it your goal? You're going to continue in the film industry? That's what? Yes, definitely. Um, I love it. And like I said, I'm, I'm completely content and happy doing the smallest role, the biggest role. Uh, you know, I, I want to keep, keep growing. Um, I was extremely blessed to, uh, to take part in three different shows that were local to, uh, to Great. the, the uh, Texas film industry. So that was extremely exciting. Um, I've got to do some commercials. I've met the best people, uh, humblest people, people that have worked with, you know, amazing actors or have, uh, I have a friend who's got, uh, did special effects on Danny Trejo. I've, you know, mm -hmm. all these. Also um, in other Texas, I think Danny lives here, right? Doesn't he? <sighs> I, I did it one time. I'm not sure. I would still... assume so because I, I he does a lot here. If not, so. at least he's over here hanging out with Robert Rodriguez most right, of the time. Right. So yeah. Yeah, there and there's so much going on. So um I'm blessed to know people that are are taking part in these things. Um but yeah, I I love it, just the uh the journey of it, the people you get to meet. There's just you know, I made friends with costumes, made friends with everybody. You know, there's just Tons of great people in the film industry here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, it's grown and growing. You may not have to leave home to work that anymore. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Well, thank you so much for coming on this show. I really thank appreciate you. you. And thank you for the hair and makeup. Of course. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> have a great day. Thanks. So we're here with Ruta Lee. Ruta, you are one of the most iconic actresses. And are you allowed to say actresses anymore? <laughs> uh, well, I say it. I, I we say, say it. that there I am an we actress, don't care. not an actor. There you go. There you go. Uh, we're just so thrilled that you have agreed to come on and talk to us on the Heart of Bash Rock Talk show. Um, we, I don't even, I have a million questions for, Good. I don't even know start <laughs> well, I, tell everybody all, about the t tell everybody the name of your book because they need to rush out and get them a copy i'm so happy that you're allowing me to do it because there are a couple of stations in texas that will not allow me to say the word ass and i don't quite <laughs> understand that i keep saying my my title is consider your ass kissed here's the cover <laughs> <laughs> love it and awesome. my thought is to those people who get all panicky about the word ass if jesus could ride into jerusalem on his ass i can certainly <laughs> kiss it there you go <laughs> there you go i love well, it well i have to tell you i heard a story and but i want to hear it from you as far as i'm concerned the ultimate you can kiss my ass might have something to do with where your stars located <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Madam Mayor. That's wonderful. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's kind of a, one of the fun stories I write about that when I was a kid and going to Hollywood High School, you know, where Lana Turner had gone and Carol Burnett uh, had gone. And oh boy, that was a big thrill for me. I would get a job in the summers as an usherette. Now, most of our audiences are too young to remember what the hell an usherette ever did. <laughs> But we stood at the top of the aisle with a flashlight, could be an usher as well, and saw people down to wherever they wanted to sit with a flashlight and got them seated. Then I could stand at the top of the aisle and watch the movies. Well, I got a job at the creme de la creme in Hollywood theaters, and that was Grauman's Chinese Theater, which, of course, is world famous. I was in my glory standing at the top of the aisle watching June Haver, Mitzi Gaynor, uh, all, all the Betty Grable, you know, the beautiful women that were doing the song and dance films and just stand at the top of the aisle and pray and say, dear God, let me do this. Please let me do this sometime, please. And 
what really worked out beautifully was that I then did such a good job. They promoted me to candy girl. Now math was never my long suit. I failed <laughs> math every time. And oh, I was in deep trouble. So I said, but I can deal with this because everything in those days was, you know, 10 cents, 15 cents, 25 cents, 50 cents for a large container of popcorn. Do you remember those days? Oh, anyway, I dealt just fine with that figure. And I could still slide over when nobody wanted anything and watch the movies at the top of the aisle. Then one night, the cashier in the box office got sick. So little old me, who was bad in math, got promoted to, ca to cashier. And I allowed to the uh, manager, I said, oh, I, I can't do this because tickets are at odd numbers, you know, $1.98, or 235 or something. I said, I can't deal with those numbers. He said, don't worry. The machine will deal with it. You put punch in two tickets at a dollar ninety-eight, and then you put in the amount, whether it be five dollars or ten dollars, and it will give you the right change. Well, I blame the machine because <laughs> it gave away forty dollars. And I was oh, no. feeling it. And I in tears said to the manager, I didn't take the money, I'm just lousy in math and it didn't work out and you'll be sorry because someday my hand and footprints will be here. And fade out, fade in, 30 years later, when I get my glorious star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, where do I get it? Right in front of the friggin' box office. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> that fun, Madam Mayor? I Thank you. That is the ultimate kiss my ass story. I, <laughs> ever, ever I love it. I love it. Well, I do seriously mean consider your ass kissed as a loving token of my appreciation to anybody that's ever turned a TV set on because I was going to be on or came to a theater to see me in a show or bought a ticket to a movie house because I was in the movie. And above all, to all the wonderful people in my life that have guided me and helped me along the way and those that have given me money for my Thalians, which Debbie Reynolds and I were the head mama of for 50 years. Um, that was uh, our signature. The Thalians was Hollywood for mental health. And we Thalians were shining a Hollywood spotlight on a disease that was closeted. Most people hid it in a dark, dingy closet. Nobody wanted to talk about their, their spouse or their relative or somebody in the family that was mentally ill. And we were shining a Hollywood spotlight, a Klieg light on mental illness, hoping to bring it into the light of healing. And then one day we woke up to the fact that we were missing the boat on something very important to America. And that is the mental health of our returning veterans. Yes. These are the people, these wonderful young people that are willing to put their lives on the line for us every day, no matter what harmful way, the place we send them. And yet when they come home, they slip through the cracks and, and get lost somewhere. And so now the Thalians is concentrating. It joined up with Op Mend, Operation Mend, Op Mend heals the broken and fractured bodies of our returning veterans. And we Thalians are trying to heal the broken and fractured mind and spirit of our beloved military people. So I, well, that is I thank anybody that has ever sent us. You can go to the Thalians, spelled T-H-A-L-I-A-N-S dot org and org, not com, org, and read about <laughs> us. And if you have any few dollars that you can contribute, please do. Our veterans deserve your love and your help. And I say to you from the bottom of my heart, consider your ass kissed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And that, you know, that's, that's very near and dear to my heart because I'm working um, on a degree in counseling and ultimately a PhD in psychology. So you're right. Mental health wow. is something that that often gets overlooked in many communities and, and across the world, you know, there should be more attention to that. So I praise you for what you've done for all these years. It's incredible. And, you know, I want to say you have a little bit of history with us here in Texas. Can we talk about that? I surely do. 
do you know that I'm actually a citizen of Texas? I vote in Texas. There so you go. Like them apples. Yep. I have, I, uh, love it. <laughs> I have a place in Fort Worth. I have uh, two townhouses. I'm not there enough now. So they're, they're rented. Uh, but my favorite theater in the country is Casa Manana uh, in Fort Worth. And my favorite people in the world are Texans. I love Texans. Well, we love that. Texans. <laughs> I think, and I consider myself one now, that we are the last of the most beautiful breed of real rah-rah Americana people. You know, that, that Texans are the most hospitable people in the world. They open up their hearts and their home and their kitchen to you and say, y'all come. <laughs> And, and right. I just love that. And I especially love theater audiences that are Texas because they don't defy you to entertain them. They come into the theater raring to have a good time, not sulky or moody, and, and just say, y'all, we're here for the good ride, and they take it. And, oh, God bless them. I just love Texas and Texans. I love it. I love it. So we hope to, that you'll I've be back to your soon. beautiful little community. Next trip, I've got to come down and break bread or a little sip or two with you. That's <laughs> right. And we can set you up with a margarita. Do you like to drink a margarita now and then? Oh, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do also have a home girl. in Mexico uh, at, at uh, the Hotel Las Hadas. We're on their campus there. And uh, so it's it's margaritas morning, noon and night, which is very nice. But uh, there are so many wonderful places to go all over Texas that are kind of wonderful. Every once in a while, I want catch one of those shows about the, the drive ins and diners and crazy places around the world. And it seems to me a lot of them settle right into Texas and uh, find terrific barbecue places and uh, good places to have drinks. Yes, Absolutely. ma'am. We can, we can set you up. We would love to host you anytime. Is Absolutely. tomorrow too soon? No, <laughs> well, come, come on, on down. <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard you refer to, and I, I'm going to read this where I wrote it because I don't want to mess it up. It's great. No. So you were the greatest Molly of them all. Oh, I've, I've you. heard that from... From oh. Meredith Wilson, she said if if it would still be playing front row and Broadway if you were still there playing Molly. So the unsinkable no, Molly Meredith Brown. Wilson, of course, did uh, so many things. He wrote Molly Brown. He wrote, um, uh, oh, my God, I'm doing the blank on, on the things that he's done. But one of the greatest showbiz writers of the world. And he was from the Midwest, and actually wound up as a neighbor of mine in Idlewild, California, where his piece of property adjoined mine. And uh, I, they came, he and his wife, Reedy at the time, his first wife, came to the opening night of Molly Brown. And it was my very first performance at Casa Manana. And that started, you know, a 60-year relationship with a city that I dearly loved and thank God loved me back, which was awfully nice. But he put into print, uh, I believe it was for Elston Brooks and the Star Telegram, that uh, I was his best Molly and that if I had been playing it on Broadway, it would still be running. And I consider that a great compliment because my other best friend, uh, my darling Debbie Reynolds, uh, was the ultimate Molly Brown on film, but I made her the ultimate Molly Brown in life. Because she <laughs> went through a lot of hardships. And I write about a lot of those things, ladies, as you know, in the book. And, and that it broke my heart that she never, ever complained. Had I known, I would have moved her in with me. You know, she and her children <laughs> spent many a night sleeping in her car because they didn't oh. have a place to live. Uh, her Her bastard husbands all did her in one way or another <laughs> and she was the first to say that she had lousy taste in men but great taste in girlfriends and i was so Aww. very proud to be a sister girlfriend to her 
You know, Rita, I know we talked about this one time on a Zoom call, but um, I was actually named after one of Debbie's iconic characters, which was Tammy Tyree. My mother so loved her and was such a huge fan that she actually named me Tammy. I'm I'm glad she didn't wasn't a huge fan of Gomer or anything. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that is very funny. (laughs) I, I don't think a lot of times people in the film industry, you know, and I worked, you know, many years in the film industry myself. I don't think they realize, especially iconic actors about you, just how broad your reach is and just what an impact that you make on people's lives without you know, really realizing it, you know, it's, it's incredible. And we thank you for everything that you do. Well, I thank you. And I thank you because you, of course, really know the inside out of show business and you know how difficult it is. We, if we're good actors, we make it look very easy. Like anybody can do it. Well, nobody can. And of course the sales of a script to a company that will do it or to a producer and and the pain that you go through in constructing something is is uh, really something and you were on kind of the sales end because you were right, representing right. all kinds of good people that you had to sell and do and i salute you my darling girl and and you consider your ass kissed <laughs> You're amazing. You're amazing. So we we really want you to come on down here to Texas and have a margarita with us and get to know Bastrop. So we're growing, Rudy. You wouldn't believe how quickly this area is growing. And we have this new, and we talked about this on an interview with Barry Corbin. We have this uh, new uh, film studio coming into Bastrop. And, oh! And, and, yeah, well, we already have a the biggest sound stage in Texas right well, here. Start, in Bastrop. start agenting again, dear. I need the job. <laughs> we might just put you to work. <laughs> so you know, I, I played uh, for a lot of weeks uh, for many years in Austin, and I also played uh, Best Little Whorehouse in Texas at the at the Paramount there, which was a wonderful experience. Oh, I have a funny story to tell you uh, if we have time. I yes, yes. Carrying my, my little dog, Toby, with me. Toby Wing was her name. And uh, I, I, you know, every once in a while I would take her on stage and, and uh, so on and so forth. And we were staying at the whole hotel right next door to the Paramount. And she had been hit by a car back in Fort Worth. Oh. And the, oh, the vet there was absolutely a miracle worker. He, her jaw was broken in many places and he screwed it all together on something that looked like a pin coming out of her cheek like this, you know, with screws coming through. And so she was fine. She could eat and drink and do everything she had to do. And eventually we went back and he took the screws out. But in the meantime, she had this, this thing, this pin coming out of her cheek. And we all hung out in the bar in the hotel next door after work, you know, having drinks or hamburgers or whatever. And a lady came to the uh, our uh, producer, Bud Franks, and said, is Miss Lee's dog in the show? And he said, oh, no, no, no. Well, on occasion, she might carry it on, you know, in a scene. Because, of course, I was playing the madam of the whorehouse. And uh, and she said, oh, no, the little dog has to be in the show. And he said, no, no, he's not. In the show. Well, if he's not in the show, why does he have a microphone on? <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> My show biz Toby Wayne. Well, I That's so look hilarious. forward to meeting you ladies in person. Tammy, we've met a couple of times now on, on the screen, but never in yes. And you both need a great big hug and kiss from me for letting me uh, visit with your audiences. Uh, It's such a pleasure. And wouldn't it be nice to do it in person? Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll look forward to hosting you in Bastrop. And um, hopefully we'll have a couple of choices for you. Barry told us we better start finding some work for him here in Texas. That's right. Put us together. You know, make us uh, oldie timey lovers or something. (laughs) I love it. Thank you so much.
So have Thank a wonderful you. rest of your day. I yes, will, you, my darling. You really are just, um, you are stunningly beautiful. Absolutely. Well, thanks. And you are ageless. So nice to say. And we think you're a bitch for looking as well as you do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. It's a delight to be with you. And I look forward to the next time. And please, dear God, keep smiling on <laughs> America. Keep smiling on Bastrop and God bless you all. God bless you. Rita. God bless. Thank you. Garage Old Spirits American Badass Whiskey presents the Sizzling Summer Nights Concert Series, June 18th, July 16th, and August 20th at Community Gardens in Bastrop, Texas. The series kicks off with American Idol Bo Bice with performances by Jay Edwards and local artist Winter Dawn. Check our lineup and get your tickets now at SizzlingSummer.com. We're here today with Christopher Chisholm, which most people call you Chiz. Chiz Chisholm, yes, that's right. And he is with Spark River Entertainment and just one of the few people, right? There's only a few of you coming from L.A. to Best Rock, <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Indeed. Well, you know, it is the film hospitality capital of Texas. And we are quite yes. proud of that. And I know that you have a tremendous background. Let's see. Director, writer, actor, producer. What am I leaving out? Well, I started, had a few startups and started a few entertainment companies, content companies. And uh, my partner, Maria Booth, is uh, my partner and co-founder. We met uh, and decided we wanted to come to Texas. We had an opportunity here, and Spark River is going to be involved in local production and uh, operating facility and doing film and television and music and new media. And we think Bastrop County is the place to do it. It is the place to yep. do it, I tell you. Always something exciting going on in Bastrop County. <laughs> We're meeting some really great people. Here's the thing I loved about Texas and about Bastrop. First of all, I spent 10 years in New York City and 25 years in Los Angeles, but I'm a, from a small town in Maine. So I like the small town feel. We gave a little bit of that Maine accent we can hear. You it. feel a little bit of that? Yes, yeah, yeah, we should it. have some chowder right <laughs> after this shoot here. That's Maybe right. a couple options. <laughs> We'll go pack the cat, then we yeah. There you go. <laughs> My mother used to call me Christopher, not Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the thing is, being from a small town, I'm very comfortable in small towns. But this is a very creative area. You know, the greater Austin area, Bastrop County, has embraced us greatly. I love the community. And what I've found out about the people here, the first thing I've, I've realized since that we relocated here to the area, because it's a burgeoning area. Everyone knows what's going on in Central Texas. Everyone knows what's going on in Travis and Bastrop County. And this seems like the last virgin territory east of downtown Austin because mm. development is really happening with our friend Elon. But um, you've got a lot of high tech. It is the music capital of the world. But we also want to make it you know, a film destination, a world-class and global destination for filmmakers, creatives, and filmmaking. And that includes film, television, new media, digital, everything from commercial production, live events, and... Um, these are the things that we specialize in. Well, and I know you spent, as you said, quite a bit of time in New York mm -hmm. and in L.A., but you have to admit that Texas is much friendlier. <laughs> you know, in Los Angeles, they don't ask, how are you? They ask, who are you? Who are you? Right. Yep. Who are you, you and what can you do for yeah, me? Yeah, well, right? it, which is a fair question in business, <laughs> but not every day. No, the thing is here, what I've found, all the events and all, all the, the people that I've spent time with, there's, it's very genuine. Uh, the folks are real genuine, kind of like New Englanders. I mean, Texans are real people. And um, the other thing is I found the most interesting thing that's different from Los Angeles is there's a cross-generational connection of people who can hang. You know, if you're from 20 to 80, people are very comfortable being with each other creatively, socially, and just, you know, intellectually or just being together. And there's not that my gang, my clique, my age group, you know, which is really cool. And people are very, very embracing and very warm. Yeah. Well, as we've worked on this show, TJ has certainly, we've both been surprised by the depth of talent, whether it's oh, musical talent, actors, writers, we've got it all right here in Bastrop County. Well, I'll tell you, you have a pool of talent and a pool of real great creative minds and great creative gifted people, really Absolutely. gifted people. And one of the things that Maria and I are very interested in is the community, education, and philanthropy. 
And we're genuine about that because if this is where we're going to live and make our time and money and work, then we want to reach out to the community. And one of the things we're trying to combat is people come out of all the great universities from UT and the Art Institute and even ACC and local high schools as well. And they're leaving Texas. You know, the, there's a lot of brain drain. We came up with a little saying, we want to do brain retain and retain those oh. brains here, particularly those creative minds who want to write, produce and act and work on films and learn how to shoot and light and edit that you love so much. I do love no, it. No, here <laughs> point, there's so many jobs that go with the entertainment industry. Everybody thinks about the top of the line, which right. is those above the line oh. people, the actors, producers, the big directors. But most of the people that work on films are skilled labor. It yes. is blue collar in a way, it's a, but it's a trade and it's a craft. Absolutely. You know what my favorite person is? Well, the craft service for people. Well, that's the most <laughs> that's important. The food people. <laughs> craft services or crafty. Right. Yeah. That's Anytime right. you get a Snickers bar or a burrito. That's right. right. That's yeah. right. They're the well, like we talked it. about, um, whenever you think of a good movie or a favorite movie, you're going to start humming the music from that movie. That's it, true. You know, or you'll hear a song and you immediately oh, think about yeah. that movie. So being the a, te a music friendly city, what a tie to the film industry. Well, I, I get out to see a lot of live music and I love all the genres of music and every genre of music. See, I was at a Chinese restaurant the other day and there was a fiddle player in the corner. I, believe, I mean, every place I know there's live, there literally is live music. And the other thing is this, when you're going to events around town and you meet all these people and you start seeing live music events, a lot of people are also connected to film and television Absolutely. and video as well. So. Absolutely. I mean, look at us. We're doing a Susan Summer Nights concert series and we're a talk show, right? So you never know what we might be involved in. When is that? Know? That's this summer. So June, July, and August of 2022, bringing talent in from Nashville and from, you know, Florida and from all over the place, right? But all those things do tie in to one another, right? So you don't have to put them to work while they're here, see? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I can sing Sinatra if you have a karaoke machine. Well, there you go, right? We found our next star. Or my, my big number one hit. After the Lovin' by Engelbert Humperdinck. There that's you always, go. that's that there you slays go. them. Brings down the house. Brings down the house. Now, TJ, at your house, Chiz Chiz's voice may sound a little familiar to your grandson. Have you picked out why? I don't know. Tell me why. I've done a lot of voiceovers. Oh, I, I spent a lot of my career as an actor voice. and then a writer and director and producer. I was supporting my acting career by producing TV because I had a wife and three kids and a mortgage. So I needed to, you know, make it make a little more money. So you have to become more diversified. But um, I was the voice of E! Entertainment Television for years. I was on the launch team at E! Entertainment Television. And when you start a startup like E! The first 11 people there, somebody has to do the voiceovers. They said, you're not only producing, you're also going to be the voice of the network. We haven't right. got a voiceover yet. <laughs> but yeah, I've done a lot of books on tape and stuff like that too, which I love. That's wonderful. The other thing about Texas is the film industry I think it's going to change, it's going to grow, it's going to, there, it, it's a burgeoning industry here because a lot of people are flocking here. Right. And I think the, legislat the legislature will catch up with the business because I think it must, because of the workforce, mm. because of employment, because of all the other businesses, the production touches. Absolutely. Right? And the, those FEMA initiatives, they're important. They're important. So uh, we need everybody to write and tell them do something with our film initiatives. There you go. <laughs> and, you know, we were talking about it from a mayor's standpoint. We know that the film industry is green and clean. And they come to yes. town and they leave their tourist dollars and they go back home, sometime to right. L.A. and New York. And if they're living here and they're craftsmen that are able to be able to sustain themselves because of multiple productions, they're great neighbors, they care about mm -hmm. the community, yeah. and they become the fabric of our community. A lot of people that I have met that are relocating here are very happy to be here, and most yeah. people are embracing them. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to have your city, your air, you know, Central Texas is there's a big, big move to Texas. We all well, the state comptroller told us there's a thousand people moving to the state of Texas every day, wow. and wow. I think the majority of those thousand are coming to Central Texas. Mm -hmm. And I love when I meet a new person and I'll say, "Well, where are you from?" And they say, "California," but the good part. <laughs> <laughs> and I always want to clarify. 
and you know we it, it's kind of a running joke locally don't california are texas but the reality is there's some folks that aren't real happy with how things are going in california yeah. and they're leaving for a reason yeah. and you know as we talked about the just some friendly genuine folks that are trying to raise their kids and make a difference in the world that's a wonderful area yeah. The other thing is, of all the films made in the history of the movie business, going back over 100 years, the top three locations for motion pictures in order are Los Angeles, New York, and Texas. And in Texas, by far, the greatest number of films and projects have been produced in the Austin area. And Bastrop's prime for that right now. And the oh, other yeah. thing is, is the first, this is a great piece of Texas movie trivia. The first movie ever to win an Academy Award, 1928, it's called Wings. And uh, it was, the first Academy Awards took place at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel in the Orange Blossom Room because I've been there many times. Nice. And I used to cover the Oscars for E! Entertainment Television. And I will tell you that the first film that ever won an Oscar for Best Picture, Wings, was shot entirely in Texas. Wow. In Corpus Christi. There you go. Oh, that's so the, the Oscar, the best, the best Academy Award picture, winning picture, was shot in Texas. So Texas has a very rich connection in history with motion pictures, not just Westerns, as we know. Right. right. Well, you can shoot nearly anything, given yeah, the, the geography the, the terrain, that we have. Yeah, the terrain that we have. We were talking about this earlier. I was like, you know, I have a I have a ranch out in Rock Springs. I have everything I need to shoot there. Mm -hmm. And here, I also own some property on the coast. I've got everything covered that you could possibly need. Hill country, desert country, absolutely. Perfect. The ocean, the mountains, yeah. the hills. The, the only thing you don't have is a ski resort, right? But that's no, okay because out. we also don't have to shovel snow. So yeah, that's all right. works out. Yeah, for me and originally, I've done we, plenty of you can, We can take yeah. care of artificial snow, but you won't have to be shoveling it to get to work. That's so right. I know that you've got some, working on some deals because you mm. guys are always working on deals. And right. TJ and I want you to come back and share news with us if you've got any in the future. Oh, we'd be happy to. We're real happy to be in Bastrop, and I really appreciate this warm welcome. And we love it here, and the folks are fantastic. Well, we're happy to have you. Appreciate it. Christopher Chisholm with Spark River Entertainment. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, Chiz. There's so many facets of the film industry, and I have with me Mark Anthony and Victor Hugo to talk about an exciting part of the film industry. Tell everybody what you do. Well, we have uh, we do several things. Our main business is working with the film industry, doing stunts and special effects, pyrotechnics, and then we also have was called Stunt Ranch, Texas Stunt Ranch. We're located in uh, McDade. We just moved there about a month ago to Bastrop County, and corporations come in to do uh, have the Hollywood experience and do team building aspects, doing uh, physical Hollywood stunts. I think that's fantastic, and we know that you know you see a, a film and you think, oh, I could be an actor. That looks really cool, and then you find out you have to memorize all those lines, you have to stand in the right place, and I imagine it's a pretty cool thing as a youngster to say, I'm going to blow stuff up, I'm going to drive a fast car, but there's a lot that goes into it. Oh yes, I think doing stunts for us is easier because it's physical. Uh, we both act as well, so we do acting and stunts. Not everybody does that. But uh, to me, acting is harder because it's a lot of mental preparation. You get nervous, and I got a speech problem sometimes when I get nervous. This guy is amazing, though. If you've seen him on, on, on some television shows, he has it. This guy can act, and he's an amazing stunt guy. So I'm proud to have him coming. What was your very first stunt? My very first stunt? Well, that would have been on uh, Independent Project, where I had to play a hitman, and I was battling another hitman, and we were fighting for control to see who would one up the other end well. I win. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, just to your point about how it's it's fun, uh, basically doing stuff that you did as a kid, but now we're getting paid money to do it. You know, crash through things, uh, wrestle, fight, you know, play fight, and uh, but we, we do it with, with the skills and the training that we've had and learned because it is very dangerous. So our always our number one thing is safety first. Absolutely. Have you ever gotten hurt during one of your stunts? Uh, Nick, no, nothing too serious. Just a couple of scrapes. You'll, you'll always have scrapes and cuts. That just yeah. that just comes with the territory. But uh, yeah, I have, I have bruises everywhere, and, and uh, I have these little trophies. I call them the little scars. Like, oh yeah, that was from this movie. Uh, this one's from that movie. <laughs> So right. doesn't, he cuts himself shaving, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So, Mark, how long have you been in the industry? Uh, almost thirty years. When I was in uh, high school at Travis, uh, uh, Travis High. Mm -hmm. Right out of high school, I got a part in Kickboxer Four. Right out of high school, like fresh, like a few months after high school, I got a part in Kickboxer Four. Then Wishbone. I did that for a little while, 
But my main purpose was actually fighting. I said fight and teach martial arts, but I kept doing both for many years. And then you talked about, you just opened a business in McDade and talked about some team building. Share a little about that. Yes, um, even people like Tony Robbins, you know, the guru, motivational speaker, has reached out to us before. Uh, we've had corporations like uh, Google contact us uh, from all over the country. We'll fly out here, bring their employees from 20 people all the way to 500 people. And they'll come out and do team building where these guys help me out. So what I do is get my team together and what they'll do is they'll zip line. Instead of just zip lining, we make it fun. We'll have things blowing up next to them safely. And then we'll have, we'll give them like paintball guns or airsoft. And as they're going down, they can shoot targets. It's really fun. And then instead of having an exploding van like we had before with the old stunt ranch, we're building an airplane that crashes into the, crash the ground and it explodes over and over again so people can do a photo op and practice jumping out of the way. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's just two of them. There's like many of them we can do. And, and the high falls, people love the high falls because how often can you jump off 40 feet or 30 feet in the air onto a big air pillow? And so people don't realize it, but on their bucket list, maybe they want to try it. And we've had women, men, at, uh, all the way up to 80 years old that are like, hey, I want to do this. And they'll do it. It's like jumping on a big air pillow. So it's really safe. We teach them how to do it first and then we coach them through it. And it's all about conquering your fears and, and, and the, the team, the motivation from your teammates pushing you to jump and take that leap of faith. And it's really, it's really neat. When people leave our place, they're so happy and excited. That's great. And that shared experience brings them together as a family and then ideally they work together exactly. as more of a family unit. Well, it helps us too. So, you know, I, I trust my guys. Uh, Victor's one of my right-hand guys. So I can, I can have him at one area and I'm not worried about it. I can just maintain the areas where my newer guys are at so I can make sure they're doing the job right. So sometimes I'll put Victor at certain areas to make sure that he's taking care of those people. And it, we, we're like a big family, so. I think that's great. When I think about having 500 people together, you have a big food fight? What do you do? 500 <laughs> people at the same time. No, no, it's too expensive for that. <laughs> I don't know. Other way to pay for it though, there's some companies that, that'll, that'll get like, um, uh, Salt Lake and other places that have come out and cater the events and do like a buffet type style uh, of food. Um, so they'll come out there between four to six hours and sometimes people rent the whole place for a whole day and have their uh, after party wedding event or some people want to have a birthday party and have like 15 friends come over and do stunts. I'm like, okay, we can do it. I think that's fantastic. And once again, the film industry, I love it from a mayor standpoint because it's green and it's clean. And those folks come, they spend money with you, they may shop downtown, and then they go back home with a wonderful memory of Bastrop. We are so glad you guys have moved to Bastrop. We wish you the best of success. Tell folks how they can get hold of you. Oh, you can go to our website at www.extremeforceusa.com with, with no either. It's just the X for right now until we get our new website going. And we also have our Facebook page, which is Texas Hollywood Stunts and Film. So you can find us on, on there as well. And reach out to us, you know, send us a message. And we're, we're welcome to, to give you a customized uh, program or just let you come out and take a tour. It's, you can visit with Mark and Victor and maybe you can get a film trophy too. Thanks oh, for coming. Oh, did you have something else? One more thing I totally forgot. Um, we're going to have a grand opening. Oh. I would love for you to come. That was important yes, to remember. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we'll have a grand opening on September 30th, October 1st. And we got, already I have like five celebrities already coming. I'm planning having 10 celebrities show up. So I got some Power Rangers coming, several. Um, some friends of mine from uh, um, Fame. You remember the TV show Fame? Yeah. Some friends of mine that were in that. So we'll have a, a, a celebrities come out and we're gonna have like a open house where people can get to come out and check out what we do. And we're gonna do some stunts that day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap a car and fly at least 30 feet in the air as it blows up and hitting another car and I'll probably have him do one of the stunts with me. So it's going to be really cool. We're going to give the, the people that come out a, a really good show. Oh my goodness. Check them out on their website or their Facebook or we'll watch for you at the open house. Sounds great. Pleasure. Thank you. We're here today with Amy Bailey and for a person who hasn't lived in Bastrop for quite a year, you know everyone, <laughs> and I am so happy that she has agreed to serve as a board of director on Visit Bastrop, and she's also been appointed to the City of Bastrop's Cultural Arts Commission. So welcome to Bastrop, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So tell everybody a little bit about your background. Um, I'll try to give you the five-second version. I, I'm actually born and bred 
a Texan um, on the Gulf Coast, and I um, truthfully ran screaming from Texas when I was about 16 mm -hmm. because I was determined to go and make my way to the big city, and I used to be a ballet dancer. So I left when I was 16, moved to New York, and when I was 18, I moved to London. And um, as far as I knew, met my husband there, had kids there, and as far as I knew, I was going to stay there forever. And then COVID hit, which was very strange. We got locked down like prisoners. Oh. And um, I had a newborn and five-year-old twins. It was really fun. Uh, and then at the same time, my sweet mom, who um, my parents are still in the Gulf Coast, she has had dementia for a while. So, oh, I'm so sorry. Just yeah, it's been just kind of a shocking thing. So we came um, at the begin, sort of spring of 2021 to come see my parents, realized it was a bad situation. So then with three suitcases, decided I think we're gonna have to stay in Texas. And uh, long story short, here we are. I didn't, I <laughs> well, didn't- I'm sorry for the reason, but I'm oh, glad you're here. You. Thank you, we're glad, we're, it's, you know, it's kind of like, I think 2020 rearranged a lot of priorities for people. Absolutely. And, um, when I wasn't able to see my parents for almost a year and a half, and my parents being sick and so far away, I just thought, no, can't, not gonna work. can't do yeah. it. So, so you said that real quickly, but you had quite a career as ballet. Yeah, I was a classical ballerina for um, 15 years. Wow. And then went from being a ballerina into film. Actually, I went into musical theater. Well, of course. So I did. <laughs> right. I hoofed it on the West End stage and did um, quite a few shows, um, which was really fun. And because not a lot of ballet dancers transition into that life. So that was a real, uh, a lot of very kind people took a chance on me. So I got to do that and then started dancing and singing on film and TV shows. And then through that, got some acting jobs and then it just kind of rolled. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't dance anymore. People are like, oh, do you still? And I'm like, no, cause I'm terrible now. So my, <laughs> my ego's too big. So I don't uh, dance professionally at all anymore, but just, um, just acting. But I think you have found in little little old Bastrop, in Bastrop mm -hmm. County, that there's quite a few connections in the film industry. I mean, that's putting it mildly. I'll, so what happened was when we realized we were going to have to stay in Texas, um, two things. I said to my husband, the only way I'm ever going to work is if we go to Austin. I mean, that's just what I thought. It's like, you know, there's only industry in Austin. And, um, and I also called my fancy L.A. manager and told her I was gonna to have to move to Texas for a while and thought she was going to fire me. Um, <laughs> Danielle, if you're listening. <laughs> um, what she said was, she was like, fantastic. Don't go to LA, which in the past, everybody was like, you have to go to LA, you have to go to LA. She was like, go to Texas. Everybody's going to Texas. That's what we That's wanna what hear. hear. Exodus right. of people from my industry, film and TV are coming to Texas Absolutely. and then the second thing so then I thought okay cool go to Austin arrived in Austin and realized it was going to be 20 million dollars for a one-bedroom apartment right, <laughs> which right. freaked me out because my whole life I've also <laughs> thought of Texas as really cheap um, so we started kind of circling wider and wider and wider and I literally just looked at a map and I was looking at the perimeter of Austin and I saw this little pocket of green I thought oh that looks pretty and, you know, Central <laughs> Texas can sometimes be not very pretty. So right. um, we got here and I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so pretty. This is so unique and the, the river and the trees and everything. And so I came here and we felt like it was a super random move. Um, and then my dad said, well, I know Bastrop. That's where your mom and I had our first kiss. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so then I just felt like the heavens opened and it all made sense. And then I found out that, you know, like 10 minutes walk from my house where we bought in Tahitian Village, there's a new 550 acre movie studio being built. And yes. then I met the gorgeous Mindy Raymond Benson, who is off camera, um, who has been my angel and mentor and has introduced me to everybody. And it's just all just, it feels very serendipitous, which is, love it. I'm so thankful because we kind of, moved here in crisis mode but um now it's come to pass where it almost feels like this was meant to be you know i really believe that nothing happens without there being a reason behind it 
You know, yeah. everything has a reason. Yeah. You know, and, and I feel the same way. I moved to Bastrop and I thought, I don't know anybody here. It didn't take long. Now I know everybody here. Where did you move and from? And it's because uh, from the Beaumont area, from the Gulf Coast. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I okay. lost everything in Hurricane Harvey. Oh and gosh. so I relocated here after the hurricane. Oh. And I just fell in love with Bastrop. Yeah. I fell in love with the city. I fell in love with the people. And it just keeps getting better and better. And not very many places are like that. You know, usually yeah. you move somewhere, it's like, oh, the news wore off. It just felt... No. I mean, there's always something fun and exciting going on in Bastrop. And, you yeah. know, the film industry is just... Oh, my gosh. It's, it's booming yeah. like crazy. Well, and we have a rich history of films that have been shot here. You know, people talk about Bernie and Hope Floats. And we know that there's films that have been shot in Bastrop County. But with the new studio, there it just feels like there's going to be so much more shot oh, in, yes. in Bastrop. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, uh, you were talking about the scenery. The truth is, with the Colorado River, you can make it look like it's the 1800s and you're expecting no. a chuck wagon to go yeah. across, or you can do, you know, do with the fancy yeah. digital stuff, make a boat race down, oh, down yeah. the Colorado. No, Absolutely. it's a, it's a, you know, it's a creative's dream to have their spoiled for choice with location yep. when they come here because they can get you can get five different scenic looks in one Absolutely. tiny area which is super rare plus you have the beautiful weather plus you have as i have found out you have extremely talented qualified people which well, they're going to find out about and, and i happen. think that one of the key things that i always talk to the to the folks in our community about there's so much support work yeah. that has to go it's not just about being the beautiful ballerina, the A, the class A actor. There's all the support services, yeah. and that's everything from welding. Oh we've gosh, we've yes. interviewed yeah. a stunt person. There, you know, writers. Mm -hmm. There, to your point of creatives. Yeah. Um, and there seems to be an environment where you guys nurture each other. Well, it's. I've always said that every film or TV project is like a mini, it's like a little ecosystem of a city and you need so many, such a variety of skill sets, which I love. So you, you know, you need seamstresses, you need makeup artists, you need carpenters, welders, electricians, everybody, there's a, there's a skill set for everyone. And so I feel like personally, I mean, I'm biased because I'm in the industry, but I feel like it's a real gift to a community to have a production come Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Because they're going to outsource. Absolutely. And they're going to use you know, all your resources. Not only, not only are they going to provide jobs, they're going to spend their money in yep. your hotels and yep. your, you know, food and, you know, everything that goes mm -hmm. along with that. And, mm -hmm. it, and it is a huge bonus to a community. Yeah. You know, as mayor, I always say that the film industry is green and clean. You know, <laughs> they, they want to leave it like they found yeah. it because they want to be able to come back yeah, to it. Yeah. They do. It does provide not only employment opportunities for the community, but as TJ was saying, they're going to leave some money. If yeah. they've come to shot, uh, it doesn't matter if it's an episode or um, a movie or they just come shoot a commercial for the day, they're going to spend some money right oh, here yeah. in Bastrop yeah. or Elgin or Smithville or wherever they happen to be yeah. filming. And they're pretty, you know, productions are by and large very strict with respecting a location. I think mm -hmm. what some... Um, locals might be worried about is that you know Hollywood production is going to come in and just kind of mow everything down, close streets, and you know destroy wildflowers or something. But I mean, every production I've ever worked on, unless it's a um, something that shouldn't be in production, but they 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 work to very strict contractual bylines because they want to work again. Otherwise, they get in trouble right. from the unions, and and it's a very small world, and people learn really fast who's not doing a good job and Absolutely. it ruins it for everybody else. So um, I feel like I can encourage locals to rest easy that if a production comes in and say, says, um, can we use your, you know, your ranch for something or can we use your shop or your restaurant or even your house that a lot of care is going to be taken Absolutely. and a lot of respect. Absolutely. In general, I'm hoping to be part of uh, <laughs> the team that makes sure that is so. But yeah, well, it's Absolutely. like any other industry; it comes down to your integrity mm -hmm. and being honest and ethical with your business dealings. Mm -hmm. But as TJ's pointed out, it's a business. Yeah, it right. Is a business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I tell you, I had lunch last week with the Dina Lewis, who we yeah. interviewed on this show, and I adore Dina, by the way. Yeah. Uh, with her and my dear friend Fran Hunter. Yeah. To tell them that I had bought a little website called filmbashopcounty.com. Oh, okay. So we're going to use this website 
to help all of Bastrop County and try to get, there's so many people in this area who are willing to let you use mm -hmm. their location. Mm -hmm. You know, I you know, recently set something up with one of the restaurants in town. I set up a filming where production that came in with them. We let people use our hotel. Perfect. There's a lot of people that are willing and we want to get that word out there. You know, we want to have that centralized database for all of Bastrop County. So hopefully you and I and Adina can work yeah. together and really yeah. make that something amazing mm -hmm. for Bastrop County because you know we we just we love it right yeah <laughs> yeah and it's cool it's fun to be a part of a production and um you can make really good money being part of a production absolutely you know supplying a location and um so I think it's a win win that the industry is coming as as much as it's been I think from what I've heard it's been a little like oh scary Ooh, it some people like yeah they have that fear that yeah, it's gonna that. be you know, LA and, and that's not going to happen. And I, I get it because I'm, I'm born and bred small town, Texas girl. So I mm -hmm. understand. And I mean, I've just moved from 20 plus years of super urban, big city living, coming out of it. And I have little kids and I'm just desperate for space and nature. And I mean, we have fawns in our backyard and coyotes and it's <laughs> great. And the last thing I want is for everything to be, Mowed and down and gentrified. Oh, I agree. I, I also mm -hmm. live in Tahitian Village. Oh, you do? And, and okay. I feel the same way. It's yeah. like, but I've seen the plan. I'm not worried about it at all. No, it's no. not going to be a traffic issue. That's no. one of the things people are really worried about. And they've they got that all worked out. Yeah. That's not going to yeah. be an no, issue. We're working to a very our, high standard. So yeah. I, think, I think we're pretty lucky. Yeah, we are. We really are. So I am so excited that you came today. Thank and you. So if people want to get a hold of you about filming in Bastrop, how can they do that? Currently, I'm I'm still uh, working out my own website and contact, but the best place to reach me now is through Visit Bastrop. So okay. the fabulous Susan Smith runs that, and she's taken me under her wing as well. So right now, Film Bastrop is located under the umbrella of uh, Visit Bastrop. So any questions right. or concerns, if you want to contact me, uh, you can also get in touch with me personally there. They'll give you my information. So any questions or concerns. That's right. Or if they want to it. put you to work in a film, <laughs> yeah. you need to call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Amy sure. Bailey, thank you for stopping by. Thank and thank you for the work that you've done on the Visit Bastrop Board and our Cultural Arts Commission. Thank you it for It is a me. treasure to have you in our community. Thank you for welcoming me so warmly. Thank you. Amy, you mentioned a guardian angel, and I happen to know Miss Mindy. Tell us all about her from your perspective. Oh, man. So I was just saying off camera, and this is why we hopped back on, because it's very funny that like, when you have a family tree, and you have about a million people here, and then you work back to the one who started it all, and my uh, everyone that I know, I think literally, and Bastrop, <laughs> and any accomplishments that I've <laughs> achieved or any connections or anything sort of all goes back just to me. <laughs> She's like, you gave me a life. So <laughs> um, I met Mindy at a party the first month that I arrived here, and I was very lost and very confused, and I had a husband and children from London who were... Um, also hot because we had arrived in um, August. Oh yeah, it's and they're like, "Mommy, why is it so oh so hot here?" <laughs> um, anyway, so we um, I came to a party. I didn't know anybody. I started talking with Mindy, and um, I kind of confessed to her that I was a little bit dismayed and confused as to why I was and what was I going to do. And I didn't know anybody in Bastrop at all. I have no family or friends in the Austin area. Um, all my family is down south. And um, she was very sweet. She was like, I know why you're in Bastrop. <laughs> I'm going to get you involved. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a lightning moment, honestly. Like, oh, having hairs went up on your I know. Oh, I'm like, we were at Central Market having coffee, and she's just like, oh, what do I, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I'm like, oh, this is divine intervention <laughs> happening right now. Because I could basically hand this gem yeah. of film Bastrop off to somebody who was boots on the ground and, you know, all that work that we had done pre pandemic. It was just sort of sitting dormant. And so it was like, now is like the perfect time to have this resurgence. And so, I mean, to your credit, you took it and like ran with it though too. So I mean, um, I made the introductions, but you've definitely made like the impact, you know? But how so. many times have I called or texted going like, 
how does city council work? <laughs> that, that part's been a steep learning curve for yes. me because I've always I've you know been a performer my whole life but and even production but I've never dealt with um any sort of city legislature I don't even know the right verbiage yet or who's in charge or who do I go for to for permit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean that's been really fun because I never saw myself in this capacity where I mean I um under your guidance I met Kim LeBlanc who's um with Texas Film Commission and I just spent two days in Dallas learning about Texas Film Friendly Forum and tax incentives and all that kind of stuff which was like wow I just never thought I would get into into that world so it's very exciting for me well mm -hmm. I'll tell you what's exciting for me is to have Mindy here and it was great that she was able to hand uh film Bastrop over to well-qualified hands, but Mindy has made another step up towards taking care of us from a film standpoint across the whole state. Yes. So I'm going to ask TJ to come back and we've got some questions for Mindy Raymond. <laughs> We're here with Mindy Raymond, and we know she's a guardian angel. We know that you have the Shine Company, and tell us about a few of the other things you're doing. Yes, it's um, it's a mouthful, and it's always my husband's like, I, when I tell people what you do, I just say you work in the entertainment industry because all of the jobs are, as you know, following the footsteps of other people that wear many hats. So I'm the communications director for the Texas Media Production Alliance, which is the state organization in lobbying and advocacy work for our film program, which we'll talk about. Um, I'm a partner at the Shine Company with Heather Page, and then I also produce content for Free Lion Productions. And, and you are also a mom, <laughs> yes. and you are also an actress, yes. and you are also a great friend. Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, all of those things, I hope. So, yes. <laughs> which do you want to talk about first? Um, I think let's dive into TXMPA, because that is definitely like a macro conversation that we get to have. And fortunately, from TXMPA is how I started working in Bastrop, actually, and how I got hired at the studios at the time, how I got introduced to y'all, and just... Right. And that's really also part of the reason why people are coming to Texas, and mm -hmm. we want to make sure that those film companies still want to come to Texas. Yes, Absolutely. yes, it's a big part of the work that we do, so... And it's really important what you guys yes. do. You yes. make a big impact. So yes. yeah, tell, tell everybody. Like yeah, that. so our organization, we advocate and lobby for the Film Incentive Program. And when I say film, I'm using that sort of as a big general for film, TV, commercial, video game, animation, and video effects. Right. And so we work hand in hand with the Texas Film Commission, which is the state organization that actually appropriates those funds. But we get to lobby and advocate and have all the fun at the Capitol. So every two years, we go back into session, which will be January of 23. Yes, it will. Woo, it's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting. But that's when we essentially find out what our funding is going to be for the next, the following two years. So we are in a great place under economic development right now. So we are housed under the Governor's Economic Development Fund, which is really an awesome thing that happened a few sessions ago, which to all of us, it shows that we are an industry worth funding because we are economic development through and through. We're jobs, we're businesses, we're bringing people into this state, we're dropping a bunch of money into these communities like Bastrop. And so it's something that obviously in the governor's office, they see is a viable industry and they want to make sure that it's And the benefit money. of the film industry being right here in Texas. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. You know, there was a time when I was an agent, you know, when, back when I was 21 instead of 29, um, <laughs> <laughs> that Texas was second only to Los Angeles, yes. you know, in the film, only to California in the film industry. And we lost those film initiatives and it really made a big impact. And then states like, like uh, Georgia, Mexico, Georgia, Georgia Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Louisiana, it pulled a lot of that business. But I think Texas is getting smart again. Mm -hmm. and saying we want this business back yeah so when you get there next year you just stick it to them huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, well the thing you have going for you is the facts right exactly. because that's what they want to look for is the exactly. numbers and to your point of it being under the governor's office it's a recognition that it is a viable industry yes 100 percent. and they've done a lot of work at the film commission to really get those data points because everyone wants to know what's the roi on this program right, right. which just if anyone's wondering it's five to one right now is our roi so for everyone one dollar granted there's about five dollars that goes back into these communities throughout right. texas and that's a huge we we wrote the program this was back in 2007 very conservatively because we know the state that we live in is conservative and we're not going to 
do a tax credit because we don't have state income tax. So there's a whole, you know, when we look at other states and how they have their programs, we can't compare apples to apples because right. thank God Texas does not have a state income tax. So we have to get a little more creative and ours is a grant and it's a rebate and it's a very clean, well-run um, program that we have that year after year, they're like, okay, this makes financial sense and it makes economic sense and it's bringing a whole new industry into texas absolutely so absolutely. and to your point like we have the talent and the crew and the oh, locations yeah. because we've been such a state that's had so much production for you know decades and right. you know hundreds of years really for absolutely. a long time well and like the theater network of texas we have the ability to bring kids up to know yes. that you can be on stage you can take care of doing the background work, the lighting, the hair, the makeup. All It, it is truly an industry yes. that can give some people some diversification. You can be an electrician and you may think, well, all I'm ever going to do is work on houses because I'm, I'm going to be building a new house. Right. Oh my gosh. Between right. film and Samsung and Tesla, there's all kinds of things oh you can do gosh. as an electrician. It's amazing. Yeah. You have, and especially out in this area because of all these different industries that are coming out here and looking at, um, the way just even commercials are shot, right? Like in, because of the pandemic, one of the sort of silver linings of that, I think, is that people consumed a ton of content. Right. And they're like, where are we gonna make this content now? And a lot of it, when we opened up, Texas was one of the first states to open up and all these commercials flooded into the area. And Bastrop was one of the like top places for filming commercials during the pandemic because you were open for business. And well, I, you know, it, it's interesting because we were talking about with, with COVID and when things all closed down, uh, construction was stopped in Austin and we were asking for double crews on Main Street. Right. Like, let's rock and roll. Right. This is the you time know? to do it. Yes. Because yes. yes. the last thing we wanted to do to our businesses was when things do open back up, now we're going to tear up the sidewalk in front, right. of your, in front of your business. Right. So right. there's a way to work safely, mm -hmm. but there's a way to work through it. And exactly. I think that um, Texas led the way and the film industry, oh my goodness, <coughs> precautions me. that they've taken with testing and making sure that they were keeping and the actors safe right. and the crew safe yeah. there, there was a right way to do it yeah and literally i'm not like saying this because i'm on this podcast but all the productions came out this way because austin was not necessarily open for business as it was out here so you reaped those benefits of having all of those productions come in dump a bunch of money into the small businesses stay in the hotels right, right. yeah it was, it was amazing that. you know what we were talking about the, the uh film initiatives. You know what the best thing about that is, Connie, is when they come in, in order to get this, they have to use a percentage of crew and cast from Texas, yeah. right? So there's, and so it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's your point of you guys so thoughtfully wrote out those incentive programs to make sure that there was a benefit for Texans. Yes. And it's a Texas rebate. That's it. We don't incentivize Los Angeles. We don't incentivize Georgia. It is Texas through and through. Well, we've talked about there's so many sides of film, and one of the other sides that we haven't talked about yet is film tourism. Film tourism is one of my favorite topics, so much so that my business partner, Heather and I, created a whole company based on film tourism and how we can really help communities see the benefit. And we always use Bastrop as one of our talking points because you have really harnessed that idea that People want to come to a place where stuff has been filmed. You know, you want to come and see those locations and you want to eat at those restaurants and take pictures next to all the great paraphernalia, especially like around Bastrop County with all the movies that have oh, been yeah. shot here. Yeah. So, Chainsaw Massacre, oh, yeah. Cold Floats, Burning, Blades, all the great ones, right? Tree of Life. I oh, know. yes. We hear that from Adina, right? The whole tree that got moved and yeah, all that. I mean, it's just a big So, we started a company that, again, it just helps. Folks understand the economic benefit of having these long-term effect of a production comes in, it's going to dump a bunch of money, then it's going to leave, but yet you can have this additional income that keeps every year coming back to you more and more and more. And the more you can promote that or get on you know, the front side of it, the more you're going to get those tourism in to come and stay. And that's really up to the community. So you try to help them out. Exactly. And we just educate all that we, you know, for small businesses, we let city officials know what, what this industry can do. We obviously talk to like DMOs and all those great organizations. They're always looking for how can we get tourists here? How can we bring those heads in beds, right? 
imagine how those folks in Forks feel, right? Where they filmed Twilight. I mean, it took a little bitty town that nobody even knew existed and put it on a global scale. Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect example. That's exactly what yeah. happens. And again, it's it's up to that community too. If they're welcoming this type of tourism to come in and they can, you know, do a few little things to help encourage those folks to come in and visit. It just, it really makes such a difference. It really well, makes that's a perfect happen. example of people want to come and see it the way it is. They mm -hmm. don't want to see condominiums all around exactly. it, right? I mean, right. It, you can really preserve what was so special. Yes, about. yes. And that's a lot of what you look at, like, when you're going to tear down a building in a community or something like that. Like, push pause on that and be like, hang on, is this a great location for a film to take place? And a lot of times it is. Or if there's things that are being, like, demolished, they want to capture that on film. And a lot of times, too, instead of knocking something down and building something else up, like, you, you lose that essence of why people came to film there in the first place. Absolutely. So encouraging that historic, you know, you have a historic downtown, like the beauty of that is that you can continue to reap that benefit over and over again with these folks that are coming in to see where all these great things have been shot. So it's absolutely. been super fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, we have cult classic here every year. Mm -hmm. All these folks, they come down to see where Texas Chainsaw Massacre was filmed. Uh, my the gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Gas station, yes. So they'll... They'll go out there to Lisa Rose's place called the Gas Station. Also has the best barbecue around. It's incredible, but um, but uh, just thousands of people from all yeah. over the world and all these you know films. And don't stars. they they watch the movie and then sleep there yes. on the property? Yes, I mean how great is that? Yeah. Well, is that what you would want to do in Forks? No. Right? Well, in Forks, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Texas on Massacre. But it's really cute. Yeah, they have the little cabins out there and they fill up first mm -hmm. and then everybody else comes over to the Hampton. Mm -hmm. And so it's literally a weekend long thing and then they have a big event over at the convention center and then you have all these film stars and you can get um, their autographs. And so a little story from that that, that sticks with me is um, the guy that played um, on the Hills Have Eyes, Michael... You know what I'm talking Michael about? Mann? Michael Mann? Michael. I'll think of it. I'll flash across the screen. <laughs> okay. He, he's kind of, it was scary in that movie. That yeah. movie was just very scary. Okay. Have you seen that? And he's sitting outside of the lobby in the, uh, uh, at the hotel. And I walk up and I said, Michael, you doing okay? He said, yeah, I'm just kind of tired. I think I'm going to go upstairs and watch cartoons. I was like, what? Who's <laughs> like the scariest actor ever? He's going to go upstairs and watch cartoons. Right. I was like, dude, you just ruined it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Never again will I be scared. After, yeah. Right, forever. But it, it, it's, it's funny because it does bring that tourism and it, that's an example of coming back and back and that's every year mm -hmm. and it gets bigger and better every right. year. Yeah. yeah. I just love the name of your company with the shine company because it really is their communities can shine. Right. And, you know, bringing the, from the lights, camera action to the exactly. idea of making it shine. Yeah. What a great name. Thank you. Yeah. We worked on that name for quite a while. And finally when we, it was one of those lightning moments that I had spoken about before. It's like, Oh, uh -huh, that's it. Like, that's the one. So That's wonderful. Yeah. And it's neat because Heather and I both come from the background. She was a film commissioner. Obviously, with my work at TXMPA, we really do see these benefits that happen, you know, particularly in the smaller communities. That's really what we like to focus on because you can have a production in Dallas and Houston and Austin and... It doesn't quite have that economic impact that it does in Bastrop and Smithville and Elgin, right? So we like to make sure that people understand that there is just literally people waiting to come into your community if you give them the chance. So, right. so you also said that you create content. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, I've been creating content for some years now. I started in the industry as an actor and then really found a lot of um, control and power, I think, being on the other side of the camera, which is so much fun and producing and, and bringing projects to different areas as well. Um, so during the pandemic, one of the, again, another silver lining was that we realized you can create content pretty much on a global scale with all this amazing technology that we have now, right? Absolutely. You can ship iPhones to people in Africa and India and Brazil and have them film themselves. And so we've been doing a lot of corporate work in that space, which has been really interesting. Mm -hmm. But I always have my hands at all sorts of projects that are coming to Texas. So it's been That's really great. fun to hear, especially, you know, the last few months, just how many more people want to come here, how many people are moving here as we see. Right. And I just feel like we're starting to creep open this, like, amazing floodgate that is just going to burst open oh, soon. Yes, with that. I mean, even Amy said, 
you know, all my film people from California, they're all moving to Texas. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's really, I it see it. It's so great. It, it is it. great. I see it from the hotel perspective because they're staying here. Mm -hmm. You know, they, I have a lot of people that stay and moved here from California. They're involved in some aspect of film or television. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's great for us. It's amazing. Well, if they move to Texas, you will end up meeting and knowing Mindy Raymond, and you'll be better for it. Thank you Thank for stopping you. by. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Well, Connie, if you want to film in Texas, Bass Shop is the place to be. If you've got questions about what it takes to do in film and what might be available in Bass Shop, this was the episode to watch. It really was. There's so much information out there. We've learned. We, you know, we've. It's amazing. I'm still blown away that we were able to put this together in one season. I'm so excited. And I know that our viewers are going to appreciate, was Ruta Lee as precious as we said? God, oh my goodness. She was amazing. And Barry Corbin, oh my goodness. I mean, I've been watching Barry Corbin from his first film role, which was Urban Cowboy. So I tell you that with some great talent in this area, I'm really excited. And I want everybody to keep their fingers crossed because I'm hoping that... Uh, that Barry Corbin lands a regular role in that spinoff from Yellowstone because he, this guy is incredible. You can't think of a Western without thinking of Barry Corbin. No, and I bet our viewers were surprised to find out that he waited till his prime to get on film. Absolutely. Hey, we're in our prime. There so we are, yeah. always. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Remember our next episode, the final one that you're going to see out of us this season is all about the music industry. So be sure to go to theheartofbassdrop.com and subscribe. But you know what, Connie? Season five is going to be coming up before you know it. And you know what we need? We need some interesting people and Bass Rock County to reach out to us and say, I want to be on your show. So in order for them to do that, they need to send us an email to heartofbassdrop at gmail.com. Uh, we, if you have a special event, you have something going on, we want to know about it. We're all about Bass Rock County. That's where our heart is. We'll see you next season.